As well as me, we have two participants joining us from Japan and one from Oxford. So I'll just very briefly introduce them. Um, so our first speaker is going to be Dr. Ekaterina Hertog. Um, she is joining us actually for the second time this year. Um, she's a research fellow in the sociology department at the University of Oxford. And she leads uh, on the project that's going on, uh, funded by the ESRC here in the UK on domestic AI and how uh, that could free up time uh, if it's introduced into our lives. And she's also a research fellow at the Gen Time Research Project, which looks at gender differences in time use in East Asia. So then our second speaker is going to be Dr. Setsia Fukuda, uh, who works at the National Institute of Population and Social Security Research in Japan. Um, and he's spent a fair bit of time um, both in Germany at the Max Planck Institute and also in the US at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Uh, and he's also worked for the Japanese government uh, for a period as an expert in the Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare. And then our third speaker is Professor Nobuko Nagase, uh, who is Professor of Labor, Economics and Social Policy at Ochanomizu University in Tokyo. Um, and she works, uh, well, in the same area that all three of them uh, work, uh, in issues to do with wage structure, work choice, uh, labor market regulations, uh, and family structure and that kind of area. So um, here is a brief timeline. It's about 15 minutes by each of the speakers, and we will probably let the Q&A session run on uh, beyond one o'clock, depending on how active it is. Um, but for now, I'm going to pass over to our first speaker, uh, Dr. Ekaterina Hertog. So uh, today we would like to talk about this uh, research that's coming out from our domestic AI research project that uh, Jason's already gave a brief introduction to. Um, the project aims to explore artificial intelligence potential to transform unpaid domestic work. And it's a UK-Japan collaboration in the UK. Um, I lead the UK team and um, Professor Nagase, who will be talking today later, leads the Japanese team. And these are all the very, uh, our collaborators listed on the slide. And I'm happy to talk about them more later. Uh, but at the moment, I'll give a brief introduction to the project and why we think it's important, and then discuss one of the papers that we are preparing for publication and our most recent findings. Um, so many of you must have come across these kind of articles in the media. Uh, how uh, they are all in, in their different ways raise sort of alarm or discuss how automation and the rise of digitalization and artificial intelligence is changing or will in the short uh, term change the paid labor market. However, of course, uh, paid work is not the only type of work that we all do. And uh, here's a slide I, I wanted to show as a brief demonstration. Um, showing the average times adults age 20 and older in the UK and in Japan are spent on paid work in blue bars compared to unpaid work. And as you can see, well, perhaps not surprisingly, um, the work time is particularly long in Japan on average. Uh, in both countries, paid and unpaid work times are kind of comparable. And of course, and this ignores the fact that at certain stages in our life, for example, when we're both working and caring for young children, unpaid workload could even overshadow the paid workload, for example. And I think the idea that I am trying to sort of uh, stress here is also very nicely captured in this image on the left, uh, which shows that societies depend on unpaid uh, labor, which is also sometimes called reproductive labor. If no one cleans, cooks, meals, and cares uh, for children, societies are going to grind to a halt. Paid work will become impossible. So given the importance of unpaid work uh, and uh, the sort of the experts raising uh, alarm or stressing the fact that uh, artificial intelligence is going to steal our jobs, we started thinking, well, if robots are going to steal our jobs, maybe they at least can also take out our trash and uh, there'll be <laughs> some balance in there. Um, we've as we started working on this project, uh, we've noticed that uh, there's been 
oh, sorry. There's been not much uh, academic uh, research or research by policymakers on the subject. However, the same cannot be said about consumers and uh, companies. So this is a simple graph uh, compiled from the figures published annually by the International Federation of Robotics. Uh, they just publish raw numbers of the number of uh, robots sold or in case of industrial robots, which is the dark uh, black line, the units installed globally in a given year. Um, they categorize the robots into four very broad categories, household service robots, and these include lawnmowers, uh, robot Roombas, the little vacuum cleaners, and uh, floor mops and, and the like. Entertainment robots, I think these are particularly come up in the media, particularly from Japan. Uh, you might have seen the Ibo, uh, little Ibo dog by Sony or the pepper and so on. Uh, professional service robots, these are perhaps med medical robots or some of the robotic units used in elder care facilities. And finally, industrial robots, the kind of big robots, gigantic robots that are building cars and so on. So as we can see from these graphs, at least in terms of the actual numbers, uh, already from 2010, household service robots outnumbered all the other types of robots uh, in terms of sales globally. There's been uh, a lot of appetite for them already. Moreover, this graph highlights that something happened in 2017 and the number of um, robots people, <clears throat> domestic robots people are buying has really accelerated. Uh, between 2018 and 2019, the number of household service robots sold increased by 40% year on year. We don't see such dramatic increases in the other types of robots. So domestic robots are being produced, they're being sold, they're being adopted. What does that mean for, for, for us as individuals and for our societies? Well, to understand that we carried, oh, and I wanted to show this. So the pictures on the left is maybe what we think about when we imagine robots, but actually quite ca uh, quietly and without the fuss, it's no, the picture on the right is the exciting robots. And, but quietly and without the fuss, these are the robots that are entering our houses and maybe enabling us to read books while the floor is getting cleaned. So we designed a uh, domestic AI project. Um, so there are a lot of uh, big collaboration, a lot of team members involved. We designed um, an expert survey uh, in which we try to assess how much of the domestic work could be automated in the next five and 10 years. What do the experts think? How, uh, is my floor cleaning at risk? And I'd be quite keen on that actually, or is there not much change gonna happen in the next few years? <clears throat> and the first takeaway from this graph, ah, this is the graph of the 17 domestic tasks. This is the type of tasks we divided and paid work in, um, in our sort of definition of tasks. We were guided by two thoughts. Thoughts. First of all, we wanted to have a good variability of tasks, and we started with a list of tasks from time use surveys, which is a traditional way of uh, measuring uh, unpaid work, because of course, it, this is a work that's not being paid for, so you can't capture it. It's not captured through GDP, through salaries, and so on. It's captured through time. On the other hand, we had to have a limited number of tasks because we needed um, experts to evaluate and give, uh, you know, think carefully about them. So we came up with this list of 15 tasks and uh, capturing both housework and uh, care work tasks. And first of all, all the tasks, the experts believe that in five years, um, all the tasks to some extent, the time we spend on them can be reduced through automation. Moreover, Housework tasks, which are the blue, orangey, and green bars, are more automatable. And in particular, the blue uh, bars stand out. These are uh, capturing routine housework types, like cooking, dishwashing, and cleaning, uh, as well as shopping, which is the two uh, green bars in the middle. They are particularly close to 30% in terms of routine domestic tasks and uh, over 40, around over 40% for shopping, extra thing can be automated in the next five years. Care work is particularly resistant uh, to automation. Again, maybe not surprisingly, uh, because it involves not just sort of a manual, it's not only a manual tasks, it's an interactive tasks, task. And care work here is captured through purple bars and, and the dark gray bar, which is adult care. The predictions for 10 years are quite similar in terms of a pattern, but the bars are go even higher and I can, show this to you later if there is interest. 
So first of all, our first finding experts, this, this were average findings across the UK and Japan, experts think different domestic tasks or domestic work is automatable. We maybe not to Christmas, but they, they expect some change in the coming five years in our domestic workloads. Um, then uh, our second contribution, our second interest in the paper is, well, who are these experts and are their predictions influenced by anything apart from their expertise? And here we, again, our starting point was the literature on paid work automation, which has, there, there's been a lot of expert surveys. There were a lot of debates about how best to capture them. But one thing that unites that literature very much is that experts are, their core characteristics is seen as their training there once they've, they've received training in machine learning perhaps computer sciences um, or uh, artificial intelligence in some way that that's what what's expected to define their views and their predictions when they're asked about the risks of automation uh we've we thought that that might or might not be true because we are not some of just our occupational training of course all of us have other experiences that uh potentially influence our perceptions of how the future would be like, what's necessary in the future, how you know societies are going to change. And here the uh, comparative nature of our project was a particular strength because we, we were able to, uh, we didn't treat our experts as a black box, we collected a number of characteristics about them. And here, uh, because of the time limit and uh, just to make the point clearer, I'm presenting the differences by two types of characteristics, specifically their background, where these experts lived and worked. Did they live and work in the UK or in Japan? And second is their gender. We thought that gender would be particularly interesting for domestic work uh, because uh, domestic work tends to be gendered in all societies across the world, women do more domestic work than men. So here are the average predictions across all the domestic tasks. We just bunched them all together, both housework and care work. What's the average um, expected proportion of automation in the next five years expected by UK, Japanese, male and female experts? And as is, I think, quite clear in this graph, there are differences and that there are there are differences by the country as well as by gender. First of all, UK experts turned out to be a lot more optimistic about domestic automation compared to the Japanese experts, um, and especially UK uh, male experts, but, but both, both types of groups expected more of domestic automation to happen in the coming years, which was somewhat of a surprise, as we generally perceive Japan as a quite innovative and you know, so many robots uh, that we meet uh, in, in shopping malls or somewhere else at, at an expo seem to come from Japan. And second big difference, they were, they were gender patterns and the gender patterns were reversed in the two countries. Interestingly, uh, what we see in the UK is broadly speaking, if we look at other surveys, the norm, men tend to be more optimistic overall about technology. They are more likely to adopt it. They are more likely to perceive it as useful, be more confident about it and just generally more positive. That's not only the case for the UK, there are large Eurobarometer surveys, for example, looking at um, 28 uh, European countries that find this general pattern across uh, all the countries. In Japan, at least uh, when it comes to domestic automation, robots that would uh, take over some of the household labor, uh, the predictions seem to be reversed. The most pessimistic subgroup uh, in this particular cross-section were Japanese men. They just didn't expect too much of unpaid work uh, to be automated in the next five years. While mostly this, this project, this was initial sort of scoping of the data and it's, uh, most of the work was done through a survey, we did carry out a number of interviews and we also reached out to the experts that made the most uh, sort of outlying responses. We, we reached out to everyone who made the lowest and the highest predictions uh, in different domestic tasks and ask them to justify, to explain their prediction, um, what, what informed them, uh, what informed their thinking. And I think particularly in Japan, there was quite a clear pattern emerged. While both female and male experts uh, had similar thinking in terms of complexity, they, people were pointing out that domestic tasks are particularly, could be particularly difficult, uh, they're complex uh, to automate. 
there, there was a big difference in the perception of the demand. Uh, the female experts, for example, we have one quote where a female Japanese expert is saying, well, domestic tasks are difficult to automate. Uh, so whatever new uh, technologies will emerge, they will be fairly pricey, but we will expect sort of or something. I will expect um, high priced goods to, to be able to make sure that the quality of domestic work sort of for the standard is maintained. For, from a couple of Japanese experts, we got uh, quotes essentially arguing that, well, it will be so expensive, there'll be no demand for it. So therefore, this, is, this will never become mainstream. I think in the, in the future, it would be interesting to carry out perhaps more qualitative research or fo focus groups to understand more how uh, personal experiences and perceptions are in informing expert predictions. Uh, but here I wanted also to talk about why is that important? Why, why, why do we need to be interested in expert backgrounds um, and how that informs or perhaps how the predictions vary by the background? Well, the predictions of the future have consequences in the present. And again, here we draw parallels with the future of work literature. The first seminal, seminal paper by two Oxford colleagues came out in 2013. It, uh, that paper made quite an alarming and bold statement, arguing that about 47% of occupations uh, could be automated or at risk of autom automation in the next, in the near future. That attracted a lot of attention of policymakers. That informs uh, budget allocation and so on. If, if we perceive something as an important uh, near future change, that's likely to inform budget allocation, policymakers, and so on. What we see here in our findings that expert backgrounds and these predictions could be informed to some extent by expert backgrounds. Uh, imagine that if uh, we carried out a survey of domestic automation and our expert panel disproportionately only consisted of Japanese male experts. Well, in that case, we'd have a rather dim view and we will perceived domestic automation is not very likely to happen. And therefore, for example, there could be the governments would pay less attention to the necessity of regulating smart technologies in the homes to the risks that these smart technologies might present by collecting personal household data and so on. So while we wouldn't argue that any particular group, you know, has uh, holds um, truth about um, expert predictions, these findings highlight the fact that expert predictions are contingent at it and it's important uh, when we study domestic automation or other topics where we turn to experts to have diverse uh, boards of experts uh, to have to have imaginaries of the future that uh, would lead to policies that wouldn't inadvertently advantage certain groups or ignore certain topics that are important for some groups for women for example but not but less seem less important for the others. I think I'm out of time. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that. And I will hand over to Setsuya. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm Setsuya Fukuda, uh, working at National Institute of Population and Social Security Research. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, so Katja has just uh, showing us how, uh, what uh, experts say about uh, future of uh, 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 automation uh, on unpaid work. So in my talk, I'm going to talk about the future of unpaid work. Uh, how does it look like in time use uh, by using a uh, simple simulation uh, we are just showing now. So this is uh, again the large uh, collaborative work with other colleagues uh, on this slide. So this is a, <laughs> just the same slide just uh, Katja has used. So as uh, she has just mentioned, uh, unpaid work is so important for the society because unpaid work, without unpaid work, uh, even paid work well, as, a, uh, society, as a functions of a society cannot be run. And people spend a significant time on unpaid work. And also uh, the unpaid work has a gender dimension. Uh, as this graph shows you, uh, men, both in, in Japan and the UK, uh, men spend significant time on paid work, while women spend uh, significant time on unpaid work. Uh, but 
this tendency uh, looks much uh, kind of striking in Japan, uh, as you can imagine, because gender role division is much severe in Japan compared with the UK. Uh, also, yeah, uh, Japanese men spend a lot more time on paid work than the UK men. And Japanese women spend much more time on unpaid work than the UK women and so forth. So uh, in this paper, <clears throat> we are uh, kind of going to estimate uh, for how uh, unpaid work will be automatable in the future and uh, doing some kind of simulation to see how time use on unpaid work changes uh, if future time use on unpaid work has changed. And also we speculate, uh, did kind of a simulation work to speculate about the consequences for labor market availability. Means uh, <clears throat> if people didn't have to spend time on unpaid work, what will be the impact on labor supply? Uh, I will uh, talk a little bit about how we did it uh, because the time is quite short. So uh, I have to be kind of very brief about how we did uh, in this simulation work. So what we have done uh, in the simulation is uh, first we uh, specified uh, unpaid work activities into uh, 19 activities. Those 19 activities are, for example, uh, cooking, dishwashing, cleaning, uh, or making textiles, laundry, gardening, pet care, shopping, uh, home maintenance, car maintenance, service use, household management, other housework, uh, physical care of a child, teaching a child, interacting with a child, accompanying a child, escorting a child, care for an adult. And then, uh, because uh, we have used a time use survey, we know exactly how much time people spend on each activity. And then uh, next, we uh, linked uh, these 19 activities to the uh, market occupations. And then uh, uh, in the previous studies, there, uh, there was a previous studies which calculated automation score for paid occupations. So there are some occupations which are very similar to those 19 activities. For example, cooking uh, can be linked with chef. And dishwashing could be also uh, linked to the dishwasher. And the cleaning could be linked to the uh, cleaner or, and so forth. And then uh, for those market occupations, we have uh, uh, already uh, automation scores, which is calculated by other studies. So in our study, we assume that same automation uh, probability can be applied to each of those unpaid work activity. So, so in this way, we have automation activity for each unpaid work activity that is obtained from market occupations. And once we have uh, linked those uh, automation score for each activity, we link to the time use score time use. So if the uh, automation score of cooking is 60%, we assume that 60% of cooking time will be reduced. Okay. So by uh, doing that, we can uh, simulate how future time use would be changed if the automation score of paid occupation is applied to each unpaid work activity. So Yes, uh, and then there is a kind of uh, very significant uh, meaning uh, by comparing UK and Japan uh, in doing this simulation work. Uh, first, both of the countries are similarly developed. And also, uh, although they are very similarly developed, we have a very different social norms, especially uh, gender dimensions, as, as I have just shown. And then another difference uh, both countries obtain is the population structures. As you know, Japan is much more, uh, not much more, but uh, uh, slightly more aged. 
uh, more older elderly people than the UK populations. So the uh, implication of the automation uh, of unpaid work could be uh, slightly different in two countries. So um, I will show you some results, main findings of the simulation work. So uh, first, this graph shows uh, how uh, each uh, 19 activities are classified across the automation scores in both countries. So I mentioned the 19 uh, activities, but these 19 activities may be too tedious to show on the graph. So I uh, kind of uh, grouped them into nine activities. For example, the cooking and dishwashing is grouped into food management and cleaning and uh, making textiles Oh, uh, cleaning is uh, linked to the household upkeep and, and making textile is also an independent category and laundry as well. Uh, however, the gardening and pet care is uh, grouped into one uh, uh, category as gardening and pet care and so forth. But anyway, so 19 activities are now grouped into nine activities. And as you see from this graph, uh, many of the activities are actually classified into 50 to 70% uh, automation probability across uh, uh, this, uh, uh, according to our classifications. And some activities such as food management and the red one, laundry, is even classified as 70 to 85% uh, automation uh, probability. And then the pink bar, uh, child care, uh, is of course a, a difficult task to automate, uh, even linking with the uh, market occupation, such as uh, in this case, like uh, uh, nanny or child care teachers. Uh, as you might note, uh, in Japan, the uh, child care uh, automation score for child care is zero to fifteen percent, while uh, that is for UK is 15 to 30 percent. Uh, this happens because the even uh, in the child care category, there are five uh, activities, uh, namely physical care of child, teaching a child, interacting with a child, accompanying a child, escorting a child. And then in both countries, the composition, uh, time use composition of each activity is different. So I would say that, uh, for example, escorting a child has a uh, much higher automation probability than other uh, care activities. And then it seems like in the UK, uh, people spend more time on es es escorting a child than the Japan. So uh, somehow the, uh, the time use on each activity is weighted so uh, the assigned automation score is different in two countries. So this graph uh, shows our simulation results on how uh, observed and simulated time use uh, uh, differ in uh, two countries and also by sex. First, this, this uh, Blue bar shows observed time use on total unpaid work time. Uh, then, uh, of course, uh, women spend more time than men on unpaid work in both countries, but this tendency is much severe in Japan than UK. And then the red bar, uh, red bar, green bar, orange bar shows uh, how time use on unpaid work will be reduced if automation takes place. And there are like three bars because uh, the, just to check the validity of our simulation work, we have used three different kinds of automation scores, which is already published in previous studies. But we mainly focus on uh, scenario one, the red bar, Frey and Osborne automation score as uh, main findings. But I mean, these three scenarios, although we use three different automation score from three different studies, 
the result look quite similar, I, I would say. Uh, for example, uh, let's say for Japanese women, uh, the observed time use on unpaid work is 329, so 330 minutes uh, per day. But this reduced to 134 minutes if automation takes place. So it becomes uh, like 60 to 70 percent of time use will be reduced according to our simulation work. And then the same could be seen for uh, UK women, for example. So UK women spend nearly 300 minutes per day on unpaid work, but this will be reduced to 130 minutes if automation takes place. And similar for UK men, Japanese men. Uh, the, so for, for example, UK men uh, up on average, 166, uh, 156 minutes are spent on unpaid work, but this could be reduced to 60 minutes uh, if automation takes place. And for Japanese men, uh, they spend 90, only 97 minutes, but it will be reduced to the half. So the uh, if automation score of uh, paid occupations are linked to unpaid mm -hmm. work activities, our estimation shows that significant amount of time could be reduced. And then next, uh, we assume that if this, these reduced time are fully used for paid work, how much employment could be created after the automation? And then uh, the graph on the left, Half are showing the percentage of potential full-time workers in Japan and the UK. And also uh, these graphs are shown by sex. Um, so yeah, uh, just le let's look at the uh, blue bar, which shows, uh, shows the simulation based on Frey and Osborne uh, automation score. Uh, according to he uh, this uh, auto, uh, simulation work, uh, we found out that uh, nearly 2% of, uh, we expect 2% of increase in full-time workers uh, for uh, Japanese women. This is quite significant, uh, I would say, in the percentage, as a percentage of employment rate. While uh, the percentage for the uh, increase in full-time employment is only 0.7% uh, for the UK women. Uh, these are because uh, Japanese, uh, Japanese women are spending more time on unpaid work, so that uh, the re their reduced time in unpaid work is quite significant, so some of them uh, could have a uh, uh, large enough uh, free up time on unpaid work so that they can uh, fully make use of it for full-time employment. Uh, graph on the right uh, showing uh, potential uh, increase in part-time employment. That is much actually larger than the full-time employment, for, uh, especially for Japan. Uh, we expect some uh, uh, little less than 6% 6 6 increase in uh, part-time employment if automation of unpaid work uh, takes place. And then somehow similar uh, to Japan, in the UK, 4% increase in uh, potential part-time workers uh, if automation takes place. Um, but uh, for 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 Japanese men, especially, uh, the increase in uh, potential part-time employment will be much uh, lower. And for the UK men, uh, little more than 2% increase will be expected in part-time employment uh, due to the automation of unpaid work. Uh, these are very simple uh, simulation uh, under the assumption that uh, all freed up un unpaid 
uh, all freed up time used on unpaid work will be used for paid work, which is quite unrealistic. So uh, please don't believe that this is this would really happens, but uh, this is just kind of showing uh, how the uh, decrease in uh, um, unpaid work time use could be uh, kind of transformed uh, into other things. And if other things could be only paid work, we could expect this kind of uh, uh, change in the labor market. Okay, so uh, I'd like to discuss some implication for uh, of, uh, implication of our result for aging society. So we might ask this kind of question, like can AI and technology help compensate a huge care demand expected in future Japan and also uh, slightly later in the UK? And also uh, can AI and technology help elderly staying healthy and independent because uh, machine or some technology would help for that. And also can AI and technology help the government avoiding fiscal bankrupt due to the increase in social security expenditure. Uh, this is uh, also depending on the cost of automation. Uh, our result could also have some implication for gender equality. Uh, we would say that automation of unpaid work may facilitate gender, gender e equality by reducing women's time use on unpaid work more than that of men. Uh, also by possibly increasing women's employment as more women are freed, freed from burden of housework and care work especially in Japan. So in conclusion, uh, our paper or simulation work shows that unpaid work uh, could be automatable, especially housework. Uh, I haven't shown you uh, so much into detail, but housework uh, has more uh, high score for automation than care work. And then the automation of unpaid work could increase everyone's dis discretionary time. And it could also have darker conse consequences. For example, uh, not everyone can access to uh, this kind of technology equally, of course. Uh, richer has better access to uh, automation uh, technologies. So this would uh, actually create new digital divide uh, so that richer can enjoy more uh, on the benefit of automation of unpaid work while uh, poorer cannot. And also uh, we could pose some questions whether automating everything is a good thing or not. Uh, especially uh, like uh, automation of housework may uh, be leading to the loss of some human skills. And also uh, we might expect uh, we might have some unexpected consequences for human development, particularly if care work such as child care is automated. We might have to think about these uh, things uh, you know, for, for the future of unpaid, unpaid work. Okay, uh, so thank you very much. So uh, next, uh, I will pass to the uh, Professor Nagase and she will talk about the, the how the AI and IoT use has changed during the COVID-19 pandemic in Japan. Hello, uh, this is Nobuko Nagase. Thank you for your opportunity for uh, this uh, uh, great uh, uh, time to share our thoughts. Uh, we were in the same uh, same group, and during this uh, research, I had the chance to make small survey with our autonomous university group of uh, uh, Department of Human Life and Environmental Science, and I would like to show uh, what happened during COVID nineteen very briefly, and also. Uh, Dr. Hartog shared the uh, result with UK, so I'm going to compare how homeschooling was conducted in UK and in Japan using this survey and using the uh, already published result about UK. Uh, 
This is the reduction of commuting seen at major stations at peak hours during pandemic. Uh, so uh, this was uh, when the uh, emergency state declaration was made from March to May last year, and uh, about 70% of commuting was reduced. And this is the number of cases for COVID. And here we had Tokyo Olympics, actually. And uh, the, the reduction of commuting uh, stayed around 50 to 30% throughout after the declaration of a uh, uh, state of emergency. And so Japan has been quite resistant at about working from home because of the company culture. But suddenly, after the emergency declaration, even though it was not a must, the government strongly recommended to work from home. And uh, so in our, in our research, we found that, especially at, at full-time work, at higher educated, at larger firms, uh, there, and also at the places where there was state of emergency, there was more increase in, in school, home school, uh, in telework. And this is the uh, change in the, uh, in the number of workers. You can see, maybe you have see, uh, heard in the news that in Japan, women were hit more than men especially the part-time workers, because, uh, because of the school uh, closure uh, and because many part-time workers worked at, uh, on a more temporary basis, they had more leave and they more stayed at home, even though the unemployment rate was not high in Japan throughout this, this period. Uh, this is uh, this is to give you uh, just a picture of how uh, Japanese men and women gap. Uh, there's a gap between men and women in childcare. This is Japan, uh, woman with small children, and this is men, husband with small children. U.S. and U.K. So you can see that in Japan, especially men have very small amount of time for care work whereas um, uh, females have a very large share. Uh, but uh, this is our, the study that we did. We did it in 2020 from November. And uh, we, we, had, uh, we had couple with the first child from age three to age 15. And in the, within the age group of 25 to 59, fathers and mothers. And, uh, uh, I will just go go and skip to the res the result. Uh, we found that uh, there was substantial increase in uh, cooking, especially for full time housewives during the pandemic. And uh, this is full time housewife, and the yellow is excuse me. This yellow is a, a full-time formerly working woman wife, uh, wives, and this blue is part-time wives, and this this uh, dark blue is husbands, and uh, so there was huge increase in housework for full-time mothers, but also. Oh, you can see that fathers also, there was increase in community, communicating with children and cleaning and even cooking. And uh, by, I, don't, I, I will not show you the result of our econometric analysis, but what we found was that uh, being at home had the largest impact of fathers to do more domestic work. And for mothers, children being staying at home had the largest impact for them to have more domestic work. Of course, when the children is smaller, the impact was also found. But uh, yeah. the fact that sudden teleworking made a larger percentage fathers to stay at home uh, increased domestic uh, activities of fathers 
And interestingly, uh, uh, it increased the uh, satisfaction of parenting of fathers uh, when compared with pre-COVID and after COVID, especially when they had more time at home. So uh, in other words, maybe Japanese men do enjoy uh, do more, more domestic activities with family, but because of the long hours, they were kind of uh, had a less chance to do so before the pandemic. Of course, the result was varied. Um, only not, not everybody was able to stay at home. Uh, in total, about 30% of fathers had more time staying at home. And uh, because of the increase of the domestic activities, there was increase in uh, investment in home appliances. Well, you might think that uh, in Japan, there is, there is a large uh, el electric appliances at home. But for example, dishwasher is not so, so much uh, popular in Japan. Uh, but according to our survey, be, at, after the pandemic, it increased by 7.3%, especially for full-time working mother, mother, mothers. And robot cleaner, it increased by 8% for, also for full-time working mothers. It, it, it was larger uh, increase for full-time working mothers who need time saving as compared with part-time workers and housewives. Uh, for... Uh, Tetsuya talked about uh, elderly care, and we can see that 8.5% of monitoring devices increased, um, especially during the COVID-19. Uh, many, many families could not visit their elderly uh, relatives or parents that uh, this kind of device that you can see each other through monitor increased. Also, uh, there was increase of automated cooking machine, a machine where you can download um, the recipe and you can just push button and uh, do cooking. Also, the sales increased. Okay, now I will turn to the how the homeschooling was uh, conducted in UK and Japan. Before UK, I used the Benzel et L. Understanding Society Briefing Note Wave 1, COVID-19 Survey, Homeschool in 2020, April. And for Japan, we will use the Ochanamiz University Survey on AI, ICT, and life change, which was conducted and retrospectively and conducted in uh, 2020, November. Uh, and our school closure in Japan was much shorter than what, what was found in UK. It was closed from March 2nd to around, well, the state of emergency was up to May 25th. And uh, the closure depended on region. Some prefectures, there, there was no school closure. However, even after the state of emergency uh, stopped, for area around Tokyo, for example, shortened school hours uh, continued till the summer, and the school came back to normal uh, after September. And uh, so was the computer required for schoolwork? This is for primary school and secondary school for UK. And uh, you can see that much less percentage of J Japanese uh, school uh, required computer for schoolwork. Uh, none of it, 40% for elementary, whereas 11% for primary, and uh, uh, less than half, 24% for primary in Japan and 26% for primary in UK. So uh, much more uh, school uh, schoolwork during school closure was conducted through the use of computer in UK. And online number of online classes, this this was not so high in either country. Uh, less than one class, uh, one class per day. So uh, so perhaps uh, in the UK, uh, at, uh, homework must have been given through the computer access. In Japan, uh, homework was usually given 
in paper basis where parents go uh, perhaps once a week and get the, the homework and do it at home. And I was rather uh, uh, alerted by this result that uh, in Japan, in the primary school, uh, one in five students do not have access to tablet or computer at home, whereas it was much, uh, the percentage much smaller in UK. This was uh, uh, quite surprising for me since I, I thought we had much access to computers. But actually in Japan, computer was uh, more popular in early 2000s and perhaps it was more taken, uh, replaced by smartphone, especially in less educated uh, 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 families. So this was kind of uh, al alar alarming result for me. This so uh, to conclude, uh, use of ICT and teleworking gave chance for increased com contact for fathers with children and increased satisfaction on parenting of fathers. Families staying at home increased domestic workload for family members, especially for full-time housewives. School closure and homeschooling was conducted in Japan to school children, mostly through home worksheets, but not so much so through computer devices. There was increased demand for household labor saving home appliances, especially for full time working wives. Well, th thank you very much. This, that, this concludes uh, my uh, presentation.